Hey y'all, welcome back to The Ranch. I'm Jared Paul, and today it's all about tiny little pots. These mame, or shohin pots. Um, mame and shohin are the smallest form of bonsai. Mame actually uh, translates to the word bean, so it really implies that they're tiny, from three to six inches. I believe six inches is the top height for it to be considered a mame. So I got 20 of these in different sizes and colors for Christmas, and I've been thinking really hard, okay, what am I going to put in these pots? Am I going to start from seed? Am I going to do cuttings? What am I going to do? So today, I'm going to do a little test. I'm going to do one of each. So I have uh, one seedling, uh, Pinus strobus, which is a weeping white pine. I grew six of them from seed uh, out of just one pine cone, so I was excited about that. So that is really young. I'm going to get that one moved over before it starts to establish its root system. And I have an American Arborvitae I grew from seed over a year ago that got scorched. I've been rehabbing it, and it's got these little buds forming up, so I'm going to get that pruned back and moved over. And then I have a Korean birch cutting that I have rooted in a bin of soil um, in the house where pretty much where all my cuttings end up, and uh, I think it's ready to get it moved over. So, fun experiment, getting into uh, this new art form. I only have one or two other really small bonsais, but these are definitely the smallest, being that they're about the size of a shot glass. So... Lots to do coming up on today's episode of Jarhead Bonsai. All right, y'all. So here we are down in the basement greenhouse. And these are the Pinus strobus that I was talking about. So six of them came up. I think I want to pick the most petite. Because you see, like, with these Japanese black pines, same time, same seeds. This one's maybe three inches tall, and this one is more like eight, nine, maybe even ten. So, you know, they can really vary. So if you're going to plant a species in a small pot, wouldn't you want one that was predispositioned to already be the smallest? That's where my logic is at. So I'm thinking... Thinking this guy. You see, I have them in my biodegradable little sacks here. There is, yep, there's a couple of roots starting to come through. So the roots pass through, but these things don't break down as quickly as I had imagined they would. So in some regards, that's great, and others, uh, not so much. So for these, they're actually really, really great. And I also use them as drainage screens. When I don't have any of the quality stuff around, they serve the purpose and it works for me. So, all right, so there is our Pinus strobus, white pine. Excuse the shaking. All right, so these are the three pots that we're going to be using today. And depending on the root systems is how I will choose which one goes in which. So you see this gnarly looking, nasty, scorched American Arbor Vitae back here. I'm going to do a nice little cleanup job on it. Let's see if we can get in closer here. Okay, so you see here, places like that, there are little healthy buds coming out. And it's pretty much like that on every branch. So what I would like to do is get all these dead ones clipped out of here some fine scissors and then bring back these branches to just before the first set of what looks like healthy new nodes and get that American Arbor Vitae set up. I'm happy that I was able to save it. Yeah, it's just hard to get in that close for y'all, but hopefully you know what I'm talking about and you can see it. Okay, so here we go. Go check out that last little mame that we're going to do. This is the Korean birch cutting. Behind my blue jacarandas, amongst some succulents. And that's a pineapple guava. There's a Delonyx regia cutting from the other day. Some more pineapple guavas. All right, here it is. So my other Korean birch, the one that I um, cut this off of, I defoliated it and I pruned it, and it's now generating new growth 
as of you know three days ago, they started to swell and bloom. So I thought this would be a good time to get this sucker planted in a pot. All right, so I'm gonna do my best to get this out of here without disrupting any roots. To be honest, like these little succulents, they multiply so much that I don't care too much about them because I know they'll just keep coming back. I usually give them away as presents. So they're just amongst it because I won't throw them away, but when the little baby succulents, you know, they start developing these like, uh, like vines and then they have their little heads at the bottom, sometimes they break off. And I'm not gonna throw them out, so I just kind of put them over here in this soil and they root up. Jeez, this thing's in here pretty good. Looks like we're gonna luck out here. Got some pretty decent roots on this cutting. So, might be a little tall. All right, so here I have the three. So I think with this Korean birch cutting, since it has decent roots, but not too many, I'm going to plant this without pruning it smaller today. Okay, and then once I see that it's taken and it starts to, you know, swell in these lower inner nodes, I'll then uh, shorten that sucker up. But I think right now it's probably, hmm, it's actually right there within your standards. Obviously, it's just one stick right now. We want to develop ramification and such over time. But even right now, you know, it, I think it's six inches tall, so we can get away with that. Okay, now with this guy, I'm going to cut this bag down some and see exactly where the roots start, and then we'll make a plan with him. And then here, this is what I'm going to start with. Here I want to, you know, like I said, prune back to these first set of inner nodes and then get all this dead stuff out of here. Okay. So looks like there's nothing, no active growth coming out of here or anything, but there are right here at this branch. So I can make that the new apex. So I'll take this one down now. Bring this one back because that's where the nodes start. Same thing here. And... I think this branch might actually be okay. So since there is the more substantial amount of growth on that one, we'll leave that until the others come out and join the party. So let me see if I can get some of this dead stuff off of here. It's just cleaning up the trunk line, you know? These scissors came, they're great for fine stuff. They came in my first bonsai kit. I don't use them that often for like juniper needles and things like that, or if I'm defoliating something, I'll usually use these because you can get in really fine. And also they're not, they're not overly, hmm, they're very sharp and efficient with small things, but you're not gonna cut through a branch with them. So there's no like oops moments where you didn't mean to cut something off and you did. Making my way around, removing all the dead needles. Oh my gosh, I just took out a node. Save me for me. 
Yep, nice new growth. Just popped it right off. Let's leave it so I don't do any more damage. All right, so let's see what these roots look like here. Lots of roots. So I I grew this December 1st, 2018 from a seed. They really stay small for a good six months and then they start to take off. these roots probably why it was able to recover so quickly even though I mean it was scorched like I thought the thing was just dried up and dead I can't re remember the specifics I know it was my fault all right so let's just do a general root oh let me go get my root rake, or my root scissors. All right, so you can tell I haven't done that much with roots because I always forget to get my root scissors. What I was noticing in this is actually this root looked pretty cool as a surface root going out sideways so that gives it some some age look to it so i will keep that as the root plane come down here get this major root there we go comes down and takes a left that's going to take the majority out all right good We'll get any going straight down since we're obviously not going to have the room. This shouldn't be a problem with my Pinus strobus because it's so young. And this is definitely a year's worth of growth on roots here. Oh my gosh, that's going to be so cool. Okay, wow. Even more roots have to come off. Getting wet real quick. actually not that bad a start on roots in an ideal world this this thing will recover perfectly and I have a nice start to my tiny little root base I'm just going to do just a little bit more
Okay. Working with this tiny thing is hilarious. sure it's well seated down in there no air between the roots we'll find a little top off here oh yeah cool Set him aside. All right. All right. So I'm thinking the Korean birch has this awesome gray coloring on its bark. So I'm thinking that that will look amazing with the black. Oh yes, look at that spectacular bonsai. <laughs> I can envision it, and it will be. Love it. Look at this little thing. The leaves on these are just so cool. They're different than any other birch I've seen, this Korean birch. I have a few growing naturally outside. I have a few that uh, volunteered in my pots from seed. And then I have some that I started from seed as well. So... I'm curious to see which grow faster and best, the ones that are solely outside, inside and outside, or just inside. So, all right, let me get some of these roots out of here. And I planned on picking up pumice or ordering pumice for this, but I just didn't. So for the next time we do little baby pots with different trees, maybe I will uh, be good and organized by then. I'm telling you, working with this tiny stuff. Oh, gosh. I'm sure there are better techniques than these, so, but I'm glad you're here learning along with me. Or making fun of me, but keep it to yourself. <laughs> <clears throat> I just had 
this and the uh, birch sitting in some water. You don't want your roots to dry out while you're transplanting little babies. So I'm just ripping down the seam, doing my best to not harm any roots. These pouches are very inexpensive. I think I got a thousand for maybe 30 bucks. Okay. So this was started in a little Tree seed seed pouch, and it seems to have grown through that skin. All right, give me all my roots. Success. Come on, yeah. All right, so we have a few roots down there, enough to get us started, I believe. three roots I'm trying to get one to go in each direction and then we'll get some soil on it yes yes okay I've seen these done where there's wire holding them into the pot, but I don't wire normally, so I always do clip and grow and like use use windows and different different times of day with the sunlight to, to get my trees to move and create curves and turns and such. So short story long, I don't have any wire. So I'm not wiring these in. I'm just gonna take extra care. And once I put them down, I'm going to leave them in that location until I know they've securely rooted. And ideally, we would finish these off with some, um, some moss because it'll keep it in tight. It'll maintain your moisture for you. At least that's what I've seen. There's this guy, Yummy. Yami Sanban or Yami Ban. He's on Instagram and he does a lot of really tiny, awesome, awesome bonsai. Oh, that didn't work. Water was too strong because I was talking. All right. No harm, no foul. All right, guys, I'm going to get these cleaned up and show you the display.
All right, y'all. So before we get out of here, I just wanted to give you a little update on our Amaryllis project. So last I updated you, I had just gotten growth on the 9th of 9. And so they all have really grown considerable amounts since the last you've seen them. However, comma, pause for effect, I have eight duds. Eight of these thus far have not kicked off a flower. Only the little guy in the middle. So this is my first actual flower bud. And the rest are just really good looking green leaves. So I don't want to be known for my amaryllis leaf growing ability. So I was thinking maybe Todd of Todd's Tropicals knew of some nutrients I could throw into the water. Um, and like, I don't know, maybe leave it in for a couple days and rinse and do something. I don't know. I am without words as this was an experiment and I am without ideas. So if you all have any questions or comments of your own, please leave them below. Help me out. All right, so now that's going to do it for today's episode of Jarhead Bonsai, y'all. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Have a great day.